Back to that Kevin show with Kevin McCullough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is someone that I think is going to represent and speak for one of the most underrepresented, uh, at least in the media, demographics that will be making their presence felt in this upcoming election. It's one of the reasons why I've been tracing a lot of the issues that they've been talking about. And there's more than just one organization that's doing this really good work. But it is an honor to uh, welcome my next guest with us. She's the founder and president and CEO of Moms for America and Moms for America Action. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kimberly Fletcher. Hello, Kimberly. Hello. It is great to be with you here today. Um, let's talk about, th- there seemed to be a, a almost imperceptible shift right after the last presidential election that when... Um, it seemed to be a declaration of war, if you will, on everyday moms that may not have even been all that political. What has happened in the last three years to mothers, how they think and how they respond to what the administration and the culture at large has been pushing? Well, they're responding with anger and frustration, um, kind of scratching their heads going, what is wrong with you people? I mean, it- it, we we see common sense and we don't understand why no one else has it. So as I talk to moms around the country, uh, the main three things I hear is they feel like they are being completely ignored. They are trying to be usurped. They're trying to be replaced and they don't like it. They're very, they're very angry and they're looking for any angles that they can find to protect their children and make sure that their parental rights are respected. And this has played out differently in different states. Um, And Virginia is a place where it swept a governor into office and they've had some success, at least legislatively there. We're going to we're going to come back to Virginia in a second. But you've got states like California now that are wanting to criminalize moms who show up at school board meetings and simply disagree. Yeah, that's a real problem. I'm actually in California this week, and I, I spent a lot of time in California this summer because moms are just very hungry for what can we do? How can we be effective? And if you've seen the the, the moms and dads, the parents in Chino who have come out and said, we're not going to take this. And this is crossing all, all divides because a motherhood is the great unifier. And when you protect your children and you care about your children, that's something that unites us all. And we have moms, I've I've met with moms in Los Angeles, I've met with Armenian moms, I've met with Muslim moms, Jewish moms, Christian moms, and we all are concerned about the same thing. So in California, they are really feeling like they're just being run over. And when you have, uh, I mean, there's a bill out right now, uh, SB 665, one, one number short of the devil bill, and that's what all the moms are calling it, because they're now saying that they can take their children away as young as 12 years old. They want to lower the age of consent to 12 years old and then say these children can consent to having their bodies mutilated or um, transitioning drugs. And the parents can't do anything about it. They can be emancipated. They can go live somewhere else. And I, I'm, there's nobody who's going to love these children or want to protect them like their parents. And for the government to step in and, and say, oh, we know better than you do. And these children who are who are too young to make these kind of decisions, the government is basically forcing them down a path. And all of the, the bullying and intimidation tactics that the schools and, and the communities are using to push them down that path is, is causing enormous amount of harm to our children. And that's why these moms are standing up and fighting back. Well, they haven't. Um, I've said this for a long time. The left they're not really having that many children and the ones uh, that they want to experiment with and do all this kind of social uh, engineering with are always those that belong to us, the the people that are uh, more traditional in our outlook. And I think by attacking particularly the bond between parent and child, um, the, the political aspirations of that side is really biting off, I think, way more than they can chew. But it's not showing up, uh, Kimberly. It's not. It's not in polling. You don't. You don't see it widely reported in media. But it, y- your group's not the only one. Moms for Action is one. But there's Moms for Liberty. There's Concerned Women for America. There's there's so many different groups that are addressing this from this type of angle. What do you feel like um, the response is going to be, barring? the current powers that be in places like the governor's mansion in, in California and the white house, uh, stepping back and saying we are wrong and making a complete three, uh, you know, one eighty. 
what 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 is the impact going to be on this election by the very constituency that you're speaking for? Moms are going to determine this election, and that's the bottom line. Uh, we've determined the election in 2021 in Virginia. We determined the election in Florida in 2022. And as I was going around the media after the 2022 election, I had all of these media outlets who were asking me, well, what happened to the red wave and what's the split vote? So there was no split vote. It was a flipped vote. And there was a red tsunami that came out as millions of moms who'd never voted flooded to the polls to vote for one office and went home, school board. Now we just need to move them up the ballot and help them see the other people that are representing them and that are going to protect their rights. And the reason why Florida did so well in the election and Governor DeSantis is because they'd already proven that that's what they're doing. The laws that they were passing, the champion that that, that the governor had become in Florida, it, we were looking at him as like America's governor. And we had moms in several other states who were like, look, DeSantis is doing, do that. You know, yeah. We had a seat at the table in Florida. And, and well, we are and now had, having a seat you had at had the table success. across the board. In Virginia, the year before, as you just mentioned, we that's did what largely swept Glenn Youngkin to uh, power. And there were moms who were of all political persuasions. I mean, we have a mom that lives up north in uh, northern Virginia, and right across the street from them, they, their kids play together, but they have diametrically opposed views on politics. And for work it out there first, you know. But during the elections, previous elections, they not only supported Democrat candidates like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, they held fundraisers for them in their in their you know large homes. And in 2021, they had Yankin signs in their front yard because you don't tell anyone that they aren't your kids. Yeah, I think, like I said, they're they're way overstepping their boundaries. And when you when you come between a mother and, and a child, I mean, there's just something that God created about that bond that makes it unique. <laughs> and it's just best if government not mess yeah. with it. Um, Dangerous not, place to be. <laughs> and it's not it's not just California, Washington State, Michigan. There's a number of states that are putting forward legislation that either criminalize the act of protest at, at school council meetings, or they're actually uh, advocating for that emancipation of the child from the family that you were talking about earlier. And I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that we have anyone anywhere in America that advocates this. But Kimberly, it's not just in one or two spots. This is a mainline view of the progressive Marxists that are trying to um, that. Well, I guess they're just tired of traditional values thwarting their plans and they can't go through the courts anymore because we've got a different type of judicial system. Thank you, Donald Trump. Um, and it's, and, and so they're, they're trying to go back and figure out, well, if we can't go through laws cause we can't get them passed legislatively and we can't get courts to be activists to, to change them, then we just have to just go out and, and grab them ourselves on the state level. And that's what it appears that they're trying to do. It's exactly what they're trying to do. And we have literally become their, their worst, their worst enemy, their biggest obstruction. Because when you start connecting all the dots of everything that they're doing from the comprehensive sex education, the gender identity, the critical race theory, um, even as, as much as, as far as the environmentalist programs and the yep. e economic collapse, I mean, you start connecting the dots and there is one objective, kill God and enslave the American people. And they're weaponizing our children to do it. Let's take a break on that note. Kill God and take away children. That is exactly what they're trying to do. Kimberly Fletcher is my guest. We're coming right back with a very specific case that we're going to talk about. Stay here. Ready or not, we'll be right back. That Kevin.